It's great to be with my friends at the FLCIO, Tim Dre, Pat Devaney. Thanks for your leadership. We've done a lot of conference calls over the last few months because there are a lot of issues going on in Washington that directly impact the men and women of uh, organized labor across the state of Illinois. But let me just tell you the bottom line here. At this moment in time, as we are taping this message to you on July the 25th, it is a defining moment in Washington, D.C., a defining moment. Because right now, Mitch McConnell has said, we're all in. We've already put that money in for unemployment. We're done with that. We're finished with helping these workers' families when it comes to health insurance, when it comes to housing. We're all in. Now we're going to move on to other things. Let me tell you how wrong he is. I don't know the exact number of people un uh, that are currently unemployed across America. I've heard 47 million, one out of every five workers. But I want to tell you this. The notion of giving them $600 a week and saying this is some sort of a luxury wage really just betrays the fact that people like Mitch McConnell don't have a clue what families are facing when you lose a job. I mean, just the simple fact of COBRA, if you want to keep your health insurance from when you work, can cost you over 400 bucks a week. I mean, that's a fact. And what we believe on the Democratic side is we're not all in. We better be all in for these families and stick and buy them. So on July 31st, just a week from now, the unemployment, uh, federal unemployment benefit package is over, finished. What are they gonna do about it? For nine weeks, we've been waiting for Mitch McConnell and the president to do something, to say something. In the meantime, Nancy Pelosi has been standing back saying, I passed the HEROES Act, $3 trillion, money for state and local governments so we don't have to lay off nurses and policemen and the important people, teachers. Well, that makes sense to me. I support the HEROES Act that passed the House. McConnell gets on the floor of the Senate every single day and mocks her effort. Oh, it's terrible. It's political. It's wrong. He has nothing, nothing to show in place of it. And now we're facing this again. And it comes down to important decisions for the men and women that you represent in organized labor. Folks that are out of work at this moment, who need a helping hand. And I just want to tell you, the Democrats are committed to you. We're going to continue to work for you. And if the Republicans want to say to 20 million Americans receiving federal unemployment insurance, you're on your own, what a hell of a message to tell the voters before November 3rd. That's where they are. That's who they are. And let me also address the basic issue of this election campaign. You've heard this so many times, I'm sure it just blows right over your head. But the notion that this is the most important election in our lifetime, it is. It is. We are talking about where this country is going. I'm for Joe Biden. I believe this man can lead our country in a way that we desperately need. We need to bring this country together. We even know that in organized labor, the ranks are not all on the Democratic side. There are a lot of your members who want to know the next president really cares about them, regardless of what party they identify with. Joe Biden's that person. He is the most caring and compassionate person I've ever met in public life. If there is ever a man ready for the moment to start to bind this nation's wounds, it's Joe Biden. We've got to get behind him solid. And that means not just Illinois. We're going to win Illinois. But it also means reaching out to neighboring states that need a helping hand, like Wisconsin, for example. We traditionally spend a lot of time in Wisconsin in presidential years, and we're going to have to do it this time, too. So we need organized labor to be part of that effort. You know this scene better than I do but we've got to make sure we work to, and, and make sure that Joe Biden is elected. It just breaks my heart and, it, and at one point and enrages me at another that this President Trump would actually say, well, I'm not sure I'll accept the outcome of the election. Maybe I won't leave. Who the hell does he think he is? If there's going to be a peaceful transition of power, that is the key to a democracy. Remember when Al Gore said, I'm not going to keep counting hanging chads. I'm leaving. We're done. I thought to myself, why are you quit now? Well, he quit because he understood what was at stake. He wanted this country to end up unified and not torn apart. Trump wouldn't waste a minute thinking those thoughts. He never thinks those thoughts. So we've got to make sure we have a decisive victory, absolutely decisive. Let me say one thing about my own race. Uh, I've got two opponents, not one, well, actually more than two, but two major opponents. The Republican fellow named Curran out of Lake County. Let me tell you about him. When he was sheriff of Lake County, his deputies gave him a vote of no confidence. That's how good a sheriff he happened to be. So when he starts preaching law and order, just remember that. Secondly, I've got a fellow named Willie Wilson, Dr. Willie Wilson. 
He's run before, he's run for president, he's run for mayor twice, he seems to run constantly. You would dismiss a man like that and say, well, he's a, he's a gadfly, he's not a serious candidate, except he's rich. He's got a net worth, I don't know what it is, but he says at this race, he's putting in $5 million of his own money to run against me. I take it seriously. I'm gonna win this race with your help, but I take him seriously. Because if he gets 5% of the vote, 5% of the vote, he has established another political party. He modestly calls that political party the Willie Wilson political party. We're going to have to put up with this election after election. We'll see it in two years, and we'll see it two years after that because of what he's doing this time. We've got to beat him. I've got a good record when it comes to labor. I've got a good record when it comes to civil rights and working with the African-American community. I'm going head on against Dr. Willie Wilson. This isn't going to be a cakewalk for him. We're going to take this seriously. And with your help, we're going to win. We need to do this. And incidentally, I'm for the fair tax. Why in the hell should millionaires and billionaires have a lower state income tax rate or the same as nurses and teachers? Millions, millionaires and billionaires should pay more. That's what it's all about when you say progressive income tax. So that working people won't have to pay that much more. In fact, there'll be a tax cut for most. So this is a good thing, the fair tax, and I support it. Let's do this together. Let's not take anything for granted. Let's go after every office. Those three congressional uh, seats that are particularly in play, Lauren Underwood, Sean Caston, Betsy Dirksen Londrigan, put those on your list. We've got to win those. Washington has to be ready to help Joe Biden be a successful president. Illinois AFL-CIO, thanks for being behind me. Thanks for being my friend. Thanks for giving me this chance to speak for you in Washington.